Uh, I don't know if you were so yeah, I've actually important. given this talk at a Hubble what we call front end guild before, in a much more condensed version. So I kind of just brought it out of my archives and added a bit to it, updated it. Um, I think I last gave it like at the beginning of the fall last year, maybe, and a lot's changed in the dev tools even since then. Chrome's always pushing out cool bits. So there was plenty for me to update. Um, but yeah, we'll get started. Um, as Blaine said, I'm Matt Munger, software engineer at Huddle here. I'm currently on our basketball squad doing iOS development. So that was brand new to me um, in the fall of last year. I've been learning a lot of Objective-C, dealing with the complete opposite problems I had on the web for so long. <laughs> Um, but before that, I was on the football squad here, um, doing almost exclusively front-end development, JavaScript development on our playbook. So, that's a little bit about me. Um, my Twitter handle is MRF here. Not to be read, Mr. F. I don't know if any of you are rest of the Mr. F. But <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> it's uh, my initials, Matthew Robert Francis. So, MRF Wonder, uh, I tweeted about music, TV, technology, traffic on O Street, <laughs> oh, you know, the cool stuff. Um, so yeah, Chrome DevTools. Who opened Chrome DevTools today? Awesome. If you didn't open Chrome DevTools, was there another browser maybe that you're using instead? Firefox fans? Firefox. Cool. Yeah, they're pretty kind of sweeping the developer community just as Chrome did. Um, and they're constantly adding to them. So when I first came up with this talk, I was trying to like expose some cool features with the dev tools to other developers. And when you think about it, there's a lot of them. Uh, you'll probably recognize all these words. They're the tabs along the top of the developer tools. That's the default tabs. Um, and there's just so many functions inside all of these, like what do you even talk about, where do you start with you? Um, trying to think of names, Crucial Chrome, tools for debugging when stakes are high. I'm not thinking of very crucial conversations. Uh, it's almost like self-help, you know, speaking books. <laughs> but this is a riff on that, and then like that one, inspect the element in you, the guy. <laughs> Maybe you did too, right? <laughs> um, So I was really thinking about like, the tool set, the ones that you're hitting every day, the ones that you're maybe not hitting so much, maybe you are kind of afraid to use them. Um, and I know for me, when I was doing JavaScript development all the time, I don't open the dev tools most days now, um, except for while I was fixing this uh, presentation. Um, but the ones I was hitting every day, elements, network, sources, console, um, the stuff that you're using when you're building a page, testing your JavaScript, um, just trying to get it to work for the very first time. So I kind of feel like most people at an introductory level are pretty familiar with those already. You'll probably skip over them. Not a lot of new cool things to go over there. That leaves these four kind of scary middle ones. <laughs> Timeline, profiles, resources, and audits. And for the sake of this, I'm just going to arbitrarily cut off resources and audits. Um, resources doesn't have a ton to deal with with JavaScript performance. Um, it's kind of where like the client side data stores live. Um, you can do a lot of inspection and analysis there. Audits could technically fit into a performance talk. Um, it's kind of the Chrome wizard of performance. So you just run an audit on your page, and it'll recommend things you can do to improve page load, to reduce network requests, to press images, all sorts of things. Um, I'm going to skip that too, because it's kind of a wizard. You just run it, and it shows you things that you can do. So that leaves timeline profiles. Uh, they have a bunch of bright colors on them, and cool features like flame charts. Flame is a cool word, so I guess they're <laughs> cool things to use. Um, so we'll talk about those, timeline profiles. Uh, starting with timeline. So the timeline tab is really just for analysis of the time spent loading and rendering your site. Um, 
And you're going to see a bunch of colors all over all these slides. Luckily, they keep the colors consistent in the timeline view. So we can kind of go on those at a high level real quick. First one is this nice blue, loading resources. Um, any operation that involves loading resources, a network request, is rendered in this blue color. Um, that's loading your HTML, your JavaScript, your images, video that you have playing, um, fonts. So those are all your blue boxes. Yellow will be evaluating JavaScript. Depending on how complex your page is, there's either a lot of this or not a lot of this. Um, and this is definitely where you can get into trouble if you have poorly written JavaScript or way too much of it. Um, and there's some other tools that I'll talk about later. I'll this here too. Purple, um, I like to think that's rendering. Um, anything involving calculating styles, recalculating styles, laying out the page. Um, if you're making a change in JavaScript to an item styling, you're going to have to recalculate that style. Um, which then forces a paint. Um, so literally pixel by pixel, compositing that layer onto the screen. And layers and compositing are like super technical CPU, GPU terms that I'm not going to get into because I don't even know them. <laughs> um, but painting, it makes things appear on the screen. So that's cool. Uh, you might also see gray. Gray in any of these views just means it's uninstrumented in the dev tools. So hasn't been hit on by Chrome's developers for you to analyze yet. Um, another obvious but arbitrary thing to mention is that you have to record all these things in order to analyze them. Um, so you literally hit the record button or use the uh, keyboard shortcut, control A or command D, start a recording, and hit it again to end the recording, and then you can analyze what happened between the start and stop times there. So what they recommend if you're doing like a page load analysis, you hit Command E, Command R real quick, let your page load, Command E again, you have your page load, you can then save and analyze. Um, I'll mention saving now. At any point in time, you can right click and save all these analyses to use later. I think it's analyses, analyses, there we go. Um, that's really helpful. I mean, if you're just arbitrarily changing things and you don't even know what your performance was to start with, how do you know that you So, save your base run and then work from there. Uh, Chrome's recommendations when you're doing these recordings, um, keep them as short as possible. Long you're recording, there's just massive amounts of information you're going to have like thrown in your face and it gets really hard to even start to look at what's going wrong. Um, avoid unnecessary actions. Uh, this is the reason why they really recommend the keyboard shortcut approach. Uh, literally just moving your mouse causes you to like trigger hover events on links and you're going to see paints and calculating styles show up. Scrolling is just a whole mess of calculations and paints, so try not to do any of that. Literally just get what you need and get out. Um, disable your cache, open up like an incognito window so that you're getting all this fresh. Um, and disable extensions that could be affecting um, your page load. So here's what one actually looks like. Have any of you run a timeline before? Yeah. When was the load? Who ran the timeline today? There we go. <laughs> so I'm right in my thinking that it's not as common a tab. Um, what you see at the top is basically those four kind of buckets of operations kind of separated out by concern. Um, top is that blue, so your loading of resources. Yellow, you're executing JavaScript, is right in the middle. Um, you see there's a lot of yellow compared to the other operations here. Um, you kind of see purple and green mixed together. They're pretty dependent events usually, so calculating and printing are there together. The bottom here is a flame chart. Flame. Uh, <laughs> so the thing with flame charts, if you've never used one before, um, height is your depth in the stack. Um, so the number of like concurrent operations running at the same time. And width is the amount of time. So a really tall flame doesn't necessarily mean anything bad at all. It means you have a lot of operations going at the same time. A wide frame is something you need to be worried about and start kind of digging into because the wider it is, the longer it's taking to execute. Um, 
Um, so you'll notice also these kind of dotted lines here. And they correspond to these weird little tick marks that aren't labeled. So good luck knowing what they mean. <laughs> um, but what they are is timeline event markers. Um, and they do have meanings. At least three of them have very specific meanings. So the blue one um, represents the DOM content loaded event. Um, this gets fired when your entire document has been loaded and parsed on the page. You'll usually see it pretty early in your timeline on page load. Red is kind of the opposite side of that. It's your window load event. So if you, in fact, like onload, you're listening to that onload event, that's when it gets fired, just that red mark. Um, basically, that's after all of your synchronously loaded resources have finally hit the page. Images, scripts, fonts. Um, anything you load after that case, obviously, obviously is not part of that. But those are kind of your two primo page load events to pay attention to. Green, going back to our fancy color theme, involves painting. Um, it's your very first paint, so your user, up until that green line, has seen nothing on their page. Um, if you go back to here, the green line is actually before the blue line, which means they're probably doing some really nice things to get content displaying quickly. Um, so, ideally, obviously, you want the first paint to be as fast as possible, because no one likes the slow, the slow internet nowadays. Uh, yellow is a timestamp, and this one's just like all for you to do whatever you want with. You can trigger these in code, you can make them pop up whenever you want, you can label them, so it's kind of this own debugging tools using timelines. Um, then we for just for you. Uh, so in JavaScript, how do you do that? Um, time and time end you might be familiar with, just as like they literally are timers. So if you want to know how many seconds something's taking to execute, you can wrap it in time and time end. And it'll bring <coughs> out a nice little number for you at the end. Um, if you're using those while recording the timeline, it also annotates the timeline with a giant yellow bar from beginning to end. Um, so say you have one function that's taking a long time to execute, you can see what's going on, just wrap that in a time and time end, and you're gonna see that annotated on your timeline. You can filter it to just that function's execution, and go from there. Um, something to note there too is that they're non-standard, so you probably don't wanna put these in production code, otherwise you're gonna get like a console error if someone's loading in an old version of IE. Um, so either remove them in production code or like have like a stubbed out function that just kind of does nothing when called. Um, and timestamp, you can pass in an optional label. If you don't, it'll just be a yellow line that you have to discern what it means. But you could label the start of the function's execution, the end, um, an arbitrary button click if you wanted to um, see that pop up. Under So, uh, going back to a completely different view of a timeline, I'll get to that in a sec. But you'll see a few yellow timestamps kind of thrown in there. Um, I think this was actually, I was like doing timelines of uh, Google Drive while I was doing this. <laughs> so, these are things that probably like Chrome engineers have left in their code. I didn't actually make these timestamps. Um, but apparently they found them really helpful. So they left them in the code. Uh, this, this is still a timeline, but it's basically two different versions of the same information. Um, on the top, you'll see frames mode. Um, basically, it's representing all of those operations um, in terms of frames per second and your refresh rate that you're trying to hit for a monitor explaining your content. Um, and the bottom is the records view, which is kind of the super high-powered, in-depth breakdown of all these operations that's happening. So I'm going to start with the records view real quick. Um, you notice all these horizontal bars. Some of them have this like dark area with some light area. That means something apparently. I drill into this one. Uh, so the dark area versus light area is just synchronous. Um, versus asynchronous. So dark area is that parent operation and any of its synchronous children. Um, you'll see that drop down arrow, which means you can open it and see, trace every synchronous child, and 
even add them all up and they fit in that same bar. Um, and the end of your kind of transparent view is your last asynchronous child that was a result of that initial call. Um, so you don't really have to worry much about the asynchronous tail there, unless it's like wildly out of control. Um, but the longer that kind of opaque bar is, the probably more problems you're having performance-wise with that specific operation. So if this is a blue bar, what kind of operation is it? Content load, resource load. Um, so yeah, this is just a quick screenshot of, we've got a parent content load kind of drilling down deep into its children calls, what was taking it so long to execute. Um, and you can see it even breaks it down into what specific operation is happening. A lot of different operations get bucketed into these parent categories of <coughs> resource loading or painting or calculating styles. So if you want to know specifically what columns taking long, you can drill and see there. Uh, it's a cool pro tip. If you hover over paints, um, you can see on the screen exactly what item was being painted at that time. Um, so you've got a really long arbitrary paint. I mean, it's not super intuitive here what this like pixel region means or what it refers to. Just hover over it um, and it'll highlight on the page the region that was saved. So. so frames mode. Um, that's these kind of vertical bars. Each one represents a frame trying to be rendered. Um, the big deal here is you're trying to match the monitor's frame rate um, because anything that's off kilter with that, your user's going to notice as kind of broken or unresponsive content, um, half laid out page, a half painted page, and um, those lines. Um, so, colors again, you should recognize that they're still the same. Um, there's also this empty bar along the top, which is idle time. Uh, you don't really need to worry about that, but it's going to be on every frame rate uh, frame. Uh, so yeah, the taller the bar in this case, the longer it took to draw, and you're aiming to have your bars below, at like worst, that 30 frame per second. <coughs> I mean, you should be shooting for 60, because why not? <laughs> but it's really easy to get over that. And you usually find yourself analyzing frame rates when you have scrolls that are starting to look janky. You're scrolling your content and things are kind of tearing as you move down the page. The screen can't keep up with the styles you're applying to the new content that's coming onto the screen. Um, and that's really the time to kind of dig into this frames model and try to find things like uh, synchronous layouts or synchronous layouts. Um, ignore this memory view real quick. Uh, at the very top here, we have a function called as a yellow triangle. Um, yellow triangle means that there's a forced synchronous layout within this call. Um, what a forced synchronous layout is, is basically you applying a style, um, a specific style, to an element, um, and then forcing it to calculate and paint that style in order to then do another calculation later on in JavaScript. The way um, the browser kind of works is it would hold off and lazily apply those styles whenever it best had the opportunity to. Um, so if you're changing, say, the height of several different elements, and then you go to like add that element to the page, then we're going to relay out the page, paint the page again. Um, but if you're alternating the other, yeah. Here's a code example of basically like a really arbitrary layout crash. Um, we're getting the height of an element at random, doubling it using some JavaScript, reapplying it as a style, and then as soon as we get another element's height, the page has to recalculate, uh, relay out, see if anything's changed with where that element is or how it's being displayed. Um, so every time you're doing this kind of querying, this reading, and then writing it to another DOM element, reading again, the page is having to basically lay out when it wasn't playing and on laying out um, 
that can cause really bad performance concerns, especially when you're doing it in, say, a loop or on an event, like a scroll event that's firing every time you're scrolling. Um, if you want a way to improve this, um, there's really easy ways to get around like a lot of the stuff where it's either bucketing all of your reading of element um, information and then laying it out all at once. Again, this is a super arbitrary example, um, and you'll probably never have a problem this easy to solve. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so anytime you see those yellow triangles, that's like, this could be a really easy performance win for you because it's probably something you're doing wrong in your JavaScript that you could pretty easily improve. Um, it'll be, again, opaque if it's that call specifically that's doing it, or it's kind of transparent if it's a child call within that. Um, memory is also an option in the timeline view. I don't really want to dive into memory because I don't know a ton about it. I'm going to kind of skip over it later too because there's a lot <coughs> involved with memory. Um, but you can do the same things. You can kind of follow nodes, heap, um, the amount of listeners you have in your DOM objects um, during your recording, just as a look at all these other attributes. Any questions so far? Giving other things. I'm not going to do any coding, so I apologize. But I figure it's visual enough to just look pretty. Um, so these are cool rendering settings. And they're kind of hidden away. I have some examples here to pull up. But uh, so they're in a, it's like a drawer within the timeline view. You click on the rendering tab. Has these five awesome lines that do really cool things and they're really flashy and fun inside. Uh, show paint rectangles you may have turned on before because it looks cool whenever you turn it on. Um, basically, all it does is every time your page is repainting, it highlights the area being repainted. Um, it's just a really visual way to figure out what exactly is going on in your page. So, I think here, this is a button, it has a cool hover state. Why is my like entire div repainting when I hover over this button? Uh, so yeah, you can just kind of like play around in your page. Um, really, it's as simple as like moving and touching things and seeing how small you can get these rectangles. The smaller the rectangle, the less the it is. Um, the other one, right under show paint rectangles, is show composited layer borders. Composited layers is another one of those things that's like probably more technical than I understand. Um, usually this involves animations um, and kind of CPU and GPU intensive things. Um, there's actually some examples of it on here. Um, it basically highlights your layers in orange. So if you see those as a text animated in orange, <coughs> is briefly highlighted in orange, which means that's a separate layer in our background content that's having to be laid out and then squashed once it's done, basically animated. So if you're doing a lot of animation heavy things, that's a fun one to play around with. Um, there's literally frames per second meter. So as we're watching our video here, it should probably hover at around a little under 30. 23, 24. Um, so it's just kind of like a live, up to date representation of the frames per second you're hitting. Um, as we get down here, our content's like not moving or reloading at all. It kind of stops because it doesn't have to be calculating things, just the same frame still showing. Enable continuous page repainting is a fun one. Basically, just constantly repainting your page. Um, what you can do is, again, mess around, do things, get your page to repaint, um, and then kind of go in and apply different or new styles and see how that affects the amount of painting going on. Um, I haven't really used this one, but I have a link in my speaker notes to an awesome example of what you can use. So I'm going to share up the slides at the end of this. There's a bunch of links to like examples and paint guides and things. And that's a good one, I think, to look at. I started reading it a little bit. Got complicated fast, but it's pretty fascinating. Um, and the other one I have this list is uh, 
show potential scroll bottlenecks. So basically, areas that are going to slow down as you scroll them. Your frame per second is going to get lower. Um, again, I was testing on my presentation while I was making these slides and updating them. So this whole area will repaint whenever I scroll on the page. Um, the entire window has a mouse wheel event listener. Um, so just things that are probably going to be expensive and lower your speed. Um, if I lose my focus over here, you can see that this entire pane, um, <clears throat> what Chrome thing is going to have trouble keeping up um, with the scroll. So those are fun, cool things. I don't usually turn them on ever because they're hidden away. Um, but if you want to look at pretty colors, turn on and show paint our things. <laughs> cool. So that's about it for the timeline side of things. Um, the thing, just in general, about performance that I found um, is that like you never really, really work on it until it's a problem. Um, most people are like, it's not like your first ticket in your sprint to like make sure the performance of this page is perfect. It's only when like you're trying to demo it to someone and it's loading really poorly or looks terrible that you're actually like, I should probably see what's going on here. Or if users are complaining or your timeouts are hidden before the page renders. Um, so it's usually gotten pretty bad by the time you're opening these tabs and starting to fix your problems. Um, yeah, timeline is a great help. So profiles is the other tab I promised to briefly mention. Um, the idea of profiles is kind of still a recording that you're taking. Um, you start and stop it, and you can analyze what happened in the meantime. Um, so it's all about JavaScript execution time and memory usage and management of your page. Um, while this kind of profile is running. Um, the first one is a JavaScript CPU profile. It's like the first option when you click that tab open. If you notice a lot of yellow in your timeline, like exorbitant amounts of yellow, um, you should probably just think about running CPU profile in your JavaScript, because it could be kind of enlightening just to figure out what actually is going on, where the meat of your execution is happening. Um, there's three ways that you can kind of dissect CPU profiles. Um, one is called top down, and I have absolutely no use for it. Um, I don't know if any of you guys do or have ever done it before, but it basically follows like your call stack, and it's impossible, next to impossible, to like find problem pain points using this view. It's just like that's a cool function that apparently called first. Time to dig in to like everything else. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't. I don't know. So, <laughs> uh, bottom up, basically, like starts, it buckets every function at the smallest point, um, and just literally aggregates the time spent in that function. Um, so pretty immediately, you see like the big performance ruiners bubble up to the top of the bottom up list. Um, so here's an example of bottom up. At the top, we've got just like idle, nothing's happening on our page. Um, Garbage collectors out there because that thing's running like mad. Um, and you've got some of, I think this is still uh, Google Docs code here. Um, some of Google Docs JavaScript is getting its way up there. Um, this like, get number of characters function has 1% of our execution time in this profile, which is very large considering some of these are like, pretty, pretty low presentation ones. Um, so what you can do is start digging into those functions and figuring out why they're taking so long to execute. Um, at any point in time in this view, you can select a function and click that X at the top, um, right next to the little eyeball. Um, and it'll basically remove that function from consideration and add its time to its parent that called it. So you can kind of bubble up these smaller functions to <coughs> the larger calls that were triggering them in the first place. Um, might not necessarily have like, jumped that approach right away, but a cool little thing you can do. Um, 
um, and flame charts, because flame is a cool word. Um, it also lets you view all this information in the flame chart. And the cool thing here is that the flame chart is by time and not over time. The other two views are aggregations over the entire profile. Your flame chart is these events as they're happening in time. Um, so they did away with all our cool colors because they don't really have any meaning in this view anymore. Um, but you can see as time is progressing in this JavaScript execution, you've got your tall flames, which again don't mean much, it just means a lot of calls are happening um, in the call stack at different kind of synchronicities. And then you have these longer chunks here, um, and that's where yeah, the wider the flame, the more you should be worried about and digging into um, because it's not resolving itself. Uh, I'll reiterate this earlier, but like, solving big wins in performance is like the only thing you should be thinking about until you have no more big wins to solve because no one notices the small wins until all your big wins have been taken care of. Um, if literally the slowest thing on your page is like loading the image and it's taking way too long to synchronously load this image for everything to happen, no one's going to care that you like improve the performance of this JavaScript function because that image is still the slowest thing on your page and slow everything else down. So yeah, focus on the wide flames first. Um, and yeah, try and get profiles as tight and compact as you can. Uh, handy baby JavaScript functions, again. Uh, profile and profile end, you can call from inside your code. Um, and it basically starts and stops a profile for you. So if you're looking to just maybe analyze like a sort function or some sort of heavy client-side JavaScript, grab it and then profile profile end, throw a label on it, and you can get those um, basically profile audits just kind of stacking up and you get all the tools for you. Uh, memory, I mentioned I'm going to like really skirt this one because I don't know that much about it, but you can also do memory profiles in this tab. Um, questions that the Chrome docs tell you to ask yourself is, is my page using too much memory? Um, do I know for sure that I don't have any memory leaks? I have actually solved a memory leak using this tool before. Um, when I was in internet at Global, I had like this dashboard that we would leave open all day, and every couple of days we'd come back to the office and it had crashed overnight. I was like, I don't know what's happening there. It should be like self-sufficient. What's going on? Um, so for one afternoon, I just kind of like ran these memory profiles on the page and found that I was just like hemorrhaging some DOM elements every time I would animate something into the page. Um, that were never getting garbage collected. They had references held around. So it's a very slow leak, but it would nonetheless. Um, should be usually somewhat obvious if you're having memory leak issues, um, but you can come here to try and solve them. And then uh, if you're forcing garbage collection too often, just making the garbage collector working over time. I got a link in my speaker's notes here, which is like a deep dive into these since I was totally not going to come to the uh, Keep snapshot. Um, basically, it's your objects and DOM nodes right at the moment you take it. It's not really a timed from here to here recording. It's just what does my DOM and memory people look right now. Um, and heap allocations is the other one you can run, and that's looking at that over time so you kind of see where things grow and where things trail off when they're collected. Um, with that, just like general considerations of performance wise, um, set a baseline. So I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but like the very first thing you should do is run a recording and save it. So you can know exactly what was happening when you started. Because like, if you're fixing things and making them faster, you can't prove it. If it's not like a huge gain, then like what's the point even? Um, this is also a really good way to like argue your case if you think performance is important, but maybe your team doesn't find it as important. You can use this as evidence that says like, look at these like really easy gains that we can make here, 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 or just 
prove how physically long it is. Maybe someone's just kind of become used to how slowly a page loads, and they don't think it's that bad. You can literally say, this took this many seconds to load. You should do something about it. Um, and if you do do something about it, you can blog post. Because blog posts are always fun. You can brag. <laughs> uh, there's a cool link in here about Trello from Fog Creek. And they have this article about how uh, one of the developers was working for a full week trying to increase the performance of his page. And he's got like, on Monday, it was this many seconds. On Tuesday, I improved by like two seconds. On Wednesday, I made no improvements because I like went down this rabbit hole and nothing I did was improving my page. And it's just like, it's really cool that he has these numbers that he can refer back to and like see exactly what he was doing. So set a baseline, just so you have something to work off of. Prove you're not making things worse, you probably know this, but. Um, isolate your problem code. Um, if you like click run, sit there for like 15 minutes, you're gonna have this like a tidal wave of information just like washing over you. It's gonna be impossible to tell when things are happening, or if somebody scroll random events in there. So just really like focus on what you're trying to profile or record. Um, use things like those encode console calls to better time box and just annotate when things are happening. Um, start, where it's hurt. start where it hurts the most. I mentioned this one too. Um, like that wide area of the flame chart. Look at that. Don't look at this other thing that you maybe, like maybe the JavaScript and this other function bugs you because it's written poorly. But if it's next to this giant wide chunk of the flame chart, like, don't touch that until you fix the giant wide chunk of the flame chart. Uh, like the yellow triangles, if you have all these yellow triangles in your records table showing all these like forced synchronous layouts, that's a pretty good thing to start with instead of maybe trying to get like. Something else, um, if you have like super long network requests, your image takes forever to load because it's massive. Compress it, like do something where it hurts most um, because no one's gonna notice the things that aren't problems right now. Yeah. Performance is a land full of big wins because if it's so bad you notice, you've got plenty of big wins waiting for you. <laughs> Um, shout out to Chrome Canary. Uh, if anyone's ever seen Paul Irish speak, he always like shows like the hottest new dev tools, which really gets everyone going. Um, <laughs> things like the flame chart weren't in the dev tools like nine months ago. So that was a pretty recent addition. So if you have Chrome Canary running, you can usually get access to those earlier. Um, use them on your pages while you're developing. Nice thing about Canary is that you can have it installed side by side with Chrome um, instead of like a data channel of Chrome itself. So just a shout out to get the concept things. Um, resources I use heavily, like Chrome actually has awesome docs about, well, I shouldn't say awesome, they're in various stages of upkeep. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see plenty of screenshots that are like, that does not look anything like the screen I'm looking at right now. But you can usually like find your way around where things have moved to. Um, these are kind of like big landing pages for the topics that I covered, but I also have links in my notes to like more specific examples. They even have like walkthroughs of how to do arbitrary profiles or stuff, things like that. Um, with that said, these slides are available at Bitly. It's just a Google presentation. Um, Chrome slash dev slash tools, which I'm amazed was not taken as a Bitly. Maybe I'll have someone yelling at me, send me an email to my Gmail account. Um, squatting on <laughs> um, again, I'm MRF Munger, not Mr. F. Um, and a quick plug for Huddle, we're hiring, like we always are. Um, specifically, front-end engineers and front-end designers, since you guys love JavaScript so much, to come here. Um, those are links to our job postings. Um, we're technically hiring all sorts of engineers, all sorts of disciplines, but I thought those were important to mention here. Questions? Yeah. 
questions, concerns. That's it. Um, Mr. John, in the spirit of talking about performance, one of the things I've been hearing rumors of but never actually seeing in the wild, it's all like unicorn, is a performance budget. Is that something that's ever floated into a, a conversation, you know, when, especially when a project is new or a new feature is being rolled out? Budget being like time spent like, just on performance? You no, know, like we are going to have, like time to live is going to be in no more than like say 1800 milliseconds and you know here's the goal here's the breakdowns in that you know in that time you know first paint is going to be in no more than 500 milliseconds you know last rendering you know, those type of things yeah i'm sure that's probably a really awesome thing to aspire to <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's unicorn we don't we really have something similar a little bit uh, we actually have a dashboard that gets released once a week. email, do you know? Once a week or once a month, I'm not sure. It might be once a month. But uh, we focus on that just for video. The amount of time it takes to serve our videos to our coaches um, from like load to start of the play. Um, so we keep track of that as a company. Um, we don't have anything internally. I don't have any squads to do, you know, Kevin? I doubt it. No. I know like I was talking, for example, on our playbook feature that I was writing. At one point, it did get so bad to the point where we were loading that page and like watching a white screen that our required JS timeout would appear, and it would stop loading. And I was like, well, this is not great. Because <laughs> it's a white screen, and it's happening to me at like Huddle, Huddle Internet. Like, crap, what's happening to all our users? So we kind of like dug around a little bit, and it actually turned out we had like we had migrated some of our server configuration and we were no longer minifying and caching our JavaScript, which we had been doing. So it's kind of like an oversight on our ops team as they were basically spinning up new servers. Um, that's one of those things where it's like we hit our timeout set site wide. <laughs> so I could have been paying more attention up front to what that page load was. Have more pizza. <laughs> <laughs>